On the 19th of April 2012, the life of a remarkable young man named David Lilienfeld was cut short when he was fatally attacked by a great white shark while enjoying one of his greatest passions, bodyboarding at Cogle Bay. The news of his untimely demise not only sent shockwaves through the tight-knit bodyboarding community, but reverberated around the world. After his passing, David's story raised questions about human interaction with nature and the lasting impact it leaves on both the local and global community, with many blaming the process of chumming for his death. So what exactly happened to him? This is the story of the Kogel Bay shark attack, the death of David Lilienfeld. David was a remarkable individual to say the least, whose life was deeply entwined with his passion for the ocean and the art of bodyboarding. He was born in Camps Bay on the 20th of June, 1991 and quickly made a name for himself in the bodyboarding community. He was known for pushing the boundaries of what could be done on a bodyboard in large and challenging surf conditions. During his short time on earth, he became one of the top prospects in the bodyboarding world and even became a world champion at the age of 20. He was popular at his university and was never seen without a smile on his face. The chief executive officer of the South African Sport Confederation and Olympic Committee, Tubby Reddy said, David had a bright future. His commitment at such a tender age to his craft was already evident. On the 19th of April 2012, David and his friends headed to Kogel Bay, a popular surfing spot that he had visited countless times. Sadly, he would never return alive. On the day of the incident, David, along with his brother Gustav and their friends, were on their way to class at Cape Peninsula University of Technology when they decided to skip their lesson and go bodyboarding. Gustav said, On the day of the incident, David was supposed to be in class. We were hanging out together. So David looked at me and said, I have five minutes to get to class. We stared at each other for five seconds and then he said, Let's go surf. So off they went, and they decided to go to Kogel Bay. Kogel Bay, located along the Cape Whale Coast in South Africa's Western Cape Province, is a coastal gem known for its captivating natural beauty. This picturesque destination boasts sandy beaches, perfect for swimming, sunbathing and picnicking, as well as providing excellent surf conditions that draw surf enthusiasts of all levels. Surfers flock to the primary beach at Kogel Bay, renowned for its consistent quality waves that cater for riders. The towering cliffs and rugged rock formations create a visually captivating setting. The bay's relative tranquility offers surfers a serene escape from the crowds. Now, in the week leading up to the tragic attack, the documentary Shark Men had scheduled filming in the bay, and the controversial practice of chumming was used to lure sharks in for their filming. Chumming is a method employed to attract animals, commonly fish or sharks, by dispersing fragments of fish remains and blood commonly referred to as chum. Sharks, known for their acute sense of smell, are drawn to the scent of blood through this practice. The documentary crew had permits for this, and despite public concern, they went ahead with the process anyway. David, Gustav, and some of their friends were now paddling in a popular surfing spot known as the Caves. Little to their knowledge, a great white shark was circling nearby. Witness Lucille Bester was on top of the cliffs above where they were swimming. She said, we finished lunch when I spotted the shark. I called my husband from the car and he confirmed it was a shark. At that point, the shark was maybe 20 to 30 meters from the surfers. There were maybe five or six surfers in the water. We started screaming from the top that there was a shark. Being from Joburg, we didn't know how to get down the mountain, but they could not hear us. It was then the shark attacked. It went for David, who now, remaining calm, fought back against the shark. David managed to fend off the shark as onlookers panicked. After a momentary retreat, the shark returned, launching a second vicious attack, and David valiantly tried to defend himself using his board, but this time it was less effective. Tragically, the third assault proved fatal, with the shark biting off David's right leg clean, resulting in massive blood loss, one witness even stating that the water turned red in a matter of seconds. Eyewitness Matt Marius said, the shark kept coming back, a second and I think a third time before it got his leg. It was like someone pushed a button to turn the sea from clear blue to dark red. That's how quickly he was losing blood from the wound. 
I think it took about eight minutes to get the young bodyboarder to shore, but you could already tell by that time, he'd lost a lot of blood. I've got a feeling I'm going to regret coming down to the beach for this surf for a long time. The visual memory of the bodyboarder being attacked is going to be stuck in the back of my mind and although I've often surfed caves alone, I don't think I'll be doing that anymore, at least for a long time to come. It was a horror show. It looked like something from the Jaws movie. Gustav, who had just witnessed the terrifying ordeal, managed to place the body of David on his board and transport it to the shore. Onlookers on the shore struggled to bring the body back to safety as the shark continued to circle in the shallow water. It was only when the shark eventually retreated that they were able to successfully bring the body onto the shore. By this point, paramedics were already there. They had arrived 10 minutes after the attack, but unfortunately, there was nothing that they could do. David was already dead. It was reported that David's leg was still floating in the water, still attached to his bodyboard, but it was never recovered. Gustav, who was now out of the water, was offered treatment by emergency service personnel, but he declined it as he wanted to wait for his father to arrive. His friends consoled him, but understandably, he was distraught. Following David's death, the city of Cape Town released a statement saying, the area in which the shark attack took place is well known for white shark presence, especially at this time of year. Sightings of white sharks by surfers at Caves and Kogel Bay are regularly received by the city's Environmental Resource Management Department, as well as the Shark Spotters website. A breaching shark was reported two weeks ago. However, many people online disputed this and blamed the chumming process for his death. They blamed the documentary team on Sharkmen, saying, this chumming is ridiculous. There hasn't been a single shark sighting where David was attacked since 1999. How can you say this was not a result of them chumming our waters? The Sharkmen team clapped back at the criticism saying, we departed False Bay over three days ago after working there from Sunday afternoon, the 15th to Monday afternoon, the 16th. During our 24 hours of work there, we chummed 24 kilograms of pilchards less than the daily allotment for each of the three cage diving boats working daily. We are terribly sorry for the loss of this family, and at this time, our thoughts and prayers are with them. After this, their permit to chum was pulled, and they never returned to Kogo Bay. A few days later, in honour of David, thousands of surfers paddled in the water at Kogo Bay to pay tribute to their friend. Many left messages on a surfboard. One writ, rest in peace David, catch some waves up in heaven. Another wrote, hi warrior, everyone here loves you so much, a sea full of tears. It was a fitting send off. The debate surrounding chumming still goes on today. I'm interested to hear your opinions in the comments. Do you think the two were related or was it just a terrible coincidence? I hope David's family have managed to find peace. Let me know what you think about this case in the comments below. This is not an AI channel. I do all of this myself, the research, writing, editing, thumbnails, etc and I upload every Thursday. So if you enjoy my work, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.